Hey everyone, so as we all know, on college campuses across the nation, there have been protests uh, last year and this year uh, about the situation going on in the land of Israel. Check out this uh, discussion uh, between a, a, an actual captured hostage who was released and, a, and the head of the protest at UCLA. Watch the way in which she, in a very dignified way, expresses herself and the fact that this um, protester, lead protester, couldn't even look her in the eye because he's so filled with shame, as well he should be, uh, about what he is representing on, the, on this campus. Check out this uh, discussion. When I was taken to Gaza, I was kidnapped. I was caught three times. And the last time, I was caught by 13 Hamas terrorists. 13. He doesn't have to. Don't force him. I just want him to hear it. He's a person. He's entitled to have his own agenda and opinions. We do not have to have the same opinions. I just want you to know the facts that you talked about, really. Right before the debate started, I wanted to ask you where you're from. Are you from here, from the U.S.? Okay, I visited the U.S. I have the facts because I've been here. Have you visited Israel before? No. Have you visited Gaza before? Probably not. When he asked you what is a Palestinian and you couldn't answer it, then I'm asking you what is a Gaza, what is a Gaza civilian? Can you answer me? I will answer to you. When you're advocating for that, and I'm telling you, you're advocating for not have rights for women to not have rights because women do not have rights in the Arab society. You're advocating for people you know, you're talking about genocide. Well, I'm here to say when October 7 happened, and that's a fact, they told me it in the inside. They didn't know about the Nova Festival music. They didn't know that we have 3,000 people in there. They planned, and they told me that, they planned to move on and kill as much as they could in Be'er Sheva, in Tel Aviv, in Haifa. They wanted to slaughter everybody. You know what? Maybe you will not believe me. I can present you my videos that I took there. Do you know how many bodies I saw? Do you know how many bodies were there? Do you know how much violence was taken on me? I was caught in the middle of a lynch. When I was entering Gaza, and I, I told you before, I have Arab suppliers, I have har Arab neighbors and Arab friends. When I was entering Gaza, and there is a video of that, I saw 100% of civilians celebrating me being taken. I didn't know about the other hostages. I thought it was only me. I didn't know about that. All I saw is 100% of civilians lynching me, beating me up. I was with a broken leg. I had bruises all over my body. Do you know that I've never cursed them? I've never argued with them. And I've never treated them like garbage. I respected them, even when they abused me. Because I believe that if I want to be respected, I have to respect everybody else. So I'm asking you one thing and one thing only because I see you're not comfortable. I'm asking you to check facts on both sides. It makes life better. And I had the privilege to be on both sides. And I told you, I started from a place that I didn't watch the news for 11 years just because of that. Talk to people, private conversation. That's the real facts. Yeah, um, aside from the fact that what she's saying is obviously true, she is a she was a hostage, uh, she survived the whole thing. One of the things that really struck me, I think the most, even more than what she was actually saying and, and educating him, was the way in which she was saying it. So dignified, so calm, so clear. One of the things that, that kind of bother me in general about this whole situation is it often leads into yelling and screaming and name calling and just blustering and it, it's it like no one's no one's getting anywhere in the discussion your words are not being heard 
in, in that way. In order to have any sort of real conversation, you have to stay calm. You have to use calm language. And uh, that's, that, that's the only way to win minds and hearts of people. That's just, that's the only thing that's going to work. Solomon writes in the book of Proverbs chapter 15 that a soft answer turns away wrath. So I think that's a good guiding force in the way in which we approach all of these sorts of discussions. If you enjoy this content in general, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button over there in the corner and uh, would love to stay in touch. Have a wonderful day, everybody.